Hi guys, good evening. How are you doing? So guys, I am coming here with a very, very quick review of uh, today's DTCA final paper. I have just uh, gone through that. Just got the paper now. Although in Telegram channels, everything was done by I think 6, 7 o'clock. I just came back home. I just thought I'll quickly go through uh, and uh, offer my comments. So uh, it was not a very easy paper and not a difficult paper because I feel it was a little lengthy. But having said that, if uh, you have done the classes properly, those of my students have done my classes or whichever faculty's classes, if you have done it properly and uh, solved the uh, questions, then it is definitely it was manageable. It was an average paper is what my initial comments are. Uh, so MCQs, I mean, I heard were slightly tricky uh, from the students from whatever they told me. But uh, let me, I've got hold of the descriptive paper. So I'm sure in MCQ also in the next one or two days, it will come off on Telegram. Now everything is coming on Telegram. Uh, Inter also has already come. I was just checking. Anyway, so guys, so these are all the uh, areas. So first question was on uh, total income problem, 14 marks. So if you see, they have given the normal tax rates here, uh, not the anything related to special tax rates for companies. So basically, your normal taxation provisions have to be done. But let me just take you through the paper quickly. So this was a manufacturing company. So I'll not do a in-depth review. Uh, we'll just do a quick analysis so that, you know, it will get over fast. And maybe later I'll release a suggested answers as well with detailed answers shortly. So anyway, uh, so manufacturing company, guys, first of all. So obviously, when the moment you see manufacturing companies, you will have to think about maybe They'll give, uh, you know, questions on additional depreciation and stuff like that. Uh, and maybe specified business also if, if there is any question like that. Let's see. And uh, yeah, the company shows a net profit of 95 lakhs is what they have given here. So the first uh, adjustment was on depreciation. Uh, the second adjustment, if you remember, we had done in class that the employer benefits if there's a dispute. So they'll create a trust and the trust will then pay. So will it amount to payment on due date, before due date, all those, that that question. Third one uh, is a re amendment which came a couple of years ago with respect to the ICMR guidelines. So anything which is uh, given to the doctors or any uh, medical uh, pharma companies payment to any of these other people, be it doctors or agents or whoever it is, any regularization, I mean, if you have, if you pay any bribe or if you pay any uh, things so that the doctors can recommend your medicine, etc. Everything is uh, deemed to be illegal and it is not allowed as a reduction for the pharma companies. So that is a violative provision of the ICMR guidelines. If you violate the regularization fee that you pay, is it allowed or not? So 37, uh, that was a question on 37, which they have asked in the third adjustment. Fourth one is about the late fee paid to the government. Uh, fourth adjustment. Fifth adjustment is the sale of plot. Then sixth one is a sale of shares. That's straightforward uh, adjustments, nothing to worry. Seven, eight, all these are easy. Eight is also regarding the debiting the interest and uh, TDS has been deducted, but again, it is deposited a little late. So what will happen? That is a low end provision will come. Then ninth adjustment is on electoral trust. So electoral trust, this was probably the last time that they can ask because the Supreme Court has already struck it down, right? So that was the question. So pretty straightforward, but maybe it was a little lengthy. Apart from that, you have some other adjustments as well, respect to closing stock and etc. And as you see, there's also a question on uh, uh, firefighting equipment. So whether it is ready to use or put to use. So this is passive use. So definitely, even though there is no incidence of fire, uh, firefighting equipment definitely will get depreciation. And as you can see, a new machinery also was installed and put to use on 14th May. So yes, you can also think about the additional depreciation on this. So that is 75 lakh is what they have told. And they have not told anything about whether it's imported, etc. So you can assume that it is brought, bought in India itself. So apart from that, uh, uh, missionary which was sold to a domestic company in 2016 at its WDV for 35 lakhs was reacquired on July 5, 2023 for 65 lakhs. This is explanation 4 to uh, section 43.1. Uh, whereby if you reacquire it at a higher rate to claim more depreciation, it's not allowed. So whatever uh, WDV you sold it for or whatever you, at the time of reacquiring uh, or the amount that you're reacquiring for, whichever is less only has to be used. Then 
So as you can see, the company has not opted for any special provisions under 115BA or BAB. So this is a straightforward question, slightly lengthy, no doubt about it. Question number two was about uh, capital gain. Mrs. Seema Agarwal, age 56 years, resident individual, acquired a residential house at Ayodhya on 1493 for 45 lakhs. The FMB was on 14-2001, was 1.2 crore, but the SDV was 1.02 crore. So again, a couple of years ago, there was an amendment which said normal amendment, I mean, normal provisions, you know, right? If the, uh, you should take the, what do you say, cost or FMB, whichever is high, right? So as per that, it is 45 lakhs or 1.2 crores, whichever is high. But there was an amendment also whereby the stamp duty, the fair market value cannot exceed the stamp duty value. So here I should take the stamp duty value of 1.02 CR. And apart from that, Seema Agarwal sold a residential house located on Ayod uh, at Ayodhya to Mr. Shiv Kumar on 15th October 23 for 15.5 crore. The value determined by Stamp Duty Authority uh, was 17 crore. So we know the uh, provision where SDV, if it is less than 110% of consideration, uh, no problem, you can take the consideration itself. So here 110% of the consideration comes up to around 17.05 CR. And uh, 17 crore is less than that only. So no problem. No need to take the SDV as such. You can take the 15.5 uh, CR itself. So that is the next pro uh, uh, part of this. Then there was an amendment asked, as you know, that under section 54 and 54 F, the benefit of capital gain that you are taking cannot exceed 10 crore. In this particular example, uh, she has invested around 11 crore, uh, 8 crore in the house and 3 crore in the capital gain account scheme for construction of the house. The maximum capital gain benefit in a compute, it should not exceed 10 crore. That is one point also which was there in this question. Then they asked a question on uh, deemed dividend. That is the point number two. That is the sub-question two was on deemed dividend. So here again, this particular question is there in my notes as a case law. Let me just show you that. So if we do not study IFOS and go, this is what happens. Generally, we tend to ignore. So if you see in my material D16, those of my students can go to D16. And you can say this is the case law number five, which is there in my material. Uh, Pradeep Kumar Malhotra versus Commissioner of Income Tax. Similar provision. I mean, not exactly same, but similar is what I'm trying to tell. SSC is holding substantial voting power in the company. Mortgage is personal property to the bank, enabling the company to avail loan. SSC insisted the company release the property on failing to do so for retaining the benefit of the loan availed from the bank. The company provided advance to the SSC. Same here also. Uh, he had given a property. SSC had given a property to the company, and company had mortgaged it to the bank and got some money. So, and the company was also paying rent to the SSC. So now what happened was he was uh, he was asking for an ad uh, advance. Same thing here also. Since the advance is, I mean, basically because of the benefit of the you know mortgage, the company provided advance to the SSC. Is this advance deemed dividend? Was the question. Since advance is in lieu of an advantage conferred upon the SSC, the same shall not be deemed as dividend. The Pradeep Kumar Malhotra case you have to write here. Apart from also. Uh, that one more point that they have asked here is, is this a loan given in the normal course of business advance? Not really. Is this company uh, in the business of giving loans as such? No. So that point anyway, uh, it will not come in this question. And this is not a case of set off also of a dividend. It's just that uh, they are setting it off against the rent, which is supposed to be paid to that SSE. So similar question, uh, which is similar to the facts of the case of Pradeep Kumar Malhotra, but of course, slightly different as well. Can't give everything same, right? But easy, easy question. Moving on. One point on uh, non-resident taxation is point number B, which was a straightforward question. You just have to apply the OM rules and you'll see whether he's a resident, non-resident, what will apply. And then straightforward question, pretty simple. Generally, we feel that uh, non-resident taxation will be very difficult, etc. But 
more often than not easy questions will come then uh, 3a and 3b were based on trust taxation so 3a was computation of 115 bbi and 3b was your uh, provisional registration process which was again pretty simple uh, it was based off of the amendment so it was a direct question it was pretty simple nothing very difficult in that so i feel the first question was lengthy uh, remaining questions are manageable but again going ahead there were a few questions which i thought were kind of lengthy so this question was regarding 115 bac and dta so question number b was regarding that which was again uh, simple but only thing is here we need to write the points of the 115 bac as to what provisions will not come your interest on 24b all that will not definitely come in uh, 115 bac so if you had just gone through the 115 bac points properly this could have been answered and in this question he has not entered into any dta so assume you are paying under the default tax regime so predominantly a question on 115 bac so 4a was questions on uh, tds and tcs question number 1 raj keshri hotels and resorts limited is engaged in the business of owning operating and managing hotels so guys this we have done in class this was an itc case law let me show you in the notes so if you see it comes under 192 you see page number x3 point number 1 same case law they have asked copy paste tips collected by the hotel from the customers and paid to the waiters employees did not amount to salary employees are not liable to employer sorry is not liable to deduct tax at source on such payments right so same question here explain the reason whether company is responsible for deducting tax because it's not in the nature of salary second one was interesting lalit an individual whose total sales in business during the year ended 31st march 23 was 1.5 crore but they have also told the turnover of lalit in the previous year 23 24 is 95 lakhs now we are doing financial year or rather previous year 23 24 generally 194c will apply to everybody other than individuals but if you are an individual whose turnover is more than 1 crore then 194c will apply if you are an individual who is less than 1 crore 194c will not apply but 194m will apply provided the transaction is more than 50 lakh and all those things the beauty of this question is when should i see that 1 crore that is only tricky part here should i see that previous year or should i see the immediately preceding previous year so as per law what is the rule 194 uh, you know 194c it is the immediately preceding previous year so should i see 31st march 23 or 31st march 24 i should see 31st march 23 so immediately preceding previous year would be this only no so in the immediately preceding previous year this guy has 1.5 crore turnover so what will apply to him he will be a individual for to whom 194c would apply right but then again they have told he has opted to compute tax under 44 ad that is also an extra point so he paid 5 lakh by check to an individual so again 194c will come turnover of mr lalit in the previous year was so and so he also paid a monthly rent from 1st april to 31st march at 16000 rupees per annum for the office premises so again in 194 i also similar provisions are there then charges 5500 service charges also i paid so you should check which year and then you can answer accordingly then this one question on 194 o selling its products through r 
digital facility e-commerce operator so it's whether 194 o will apply or not is the question here in this particular thing let's check so what do you think guys whether 194 o will apply or not in this case or will t any tcs provision come Just a sec. So if you have done these classes very carefully, in regular batch we had done the in-depth charts. And in the fast track premium batch, we had done the quick revision. C194 O. There's an exception in 194 O. And that is what? For individual and HF, there is no 194 O will come, where the e commerce participant is an individual or HF. In this question, it's a partnership firm. And also, if the gross amount of sales does not exceed 5 lakh, 194 O will not come. So in this question, the gross amount of sale was 4,90,000. So if you write it's exempt, it's wrong because you see the question here is of a partnership firm. So the exemption will apply only if you are an individual and it should not exceed 5 lakh. Got it? So here it is not an individual. So it will come. And in this question, they have also told that uh, 60,000 was paid directly by the seller, I mean, by the buyer to the seller directly without involving the e commerce operator. So there is already a provision in 184O. You see, any payment made by it's there in my notes, obviously, in X19. Uh, any payment made by a purchaser of goods or recipient of services directly to an e commerce participant facilitated by an e commerce operator shall also be included in the gross amount. So in this question, they are told instead of 4.9 lakhs, they had given uh, 4.3 lakhs only. 60,000 was given directly, nothing doing. So that will also be taken into consideration. Then point number B was about the notified jurisdictional area and the question on ALP, which was pretty straightforward. Then point number five, guys, this was related to case laws. Generally, students will leave this because it's regarding case law. But then uh, Institute had released one uh, case law digest with some four or five case laws, which uh, is part of one of my lectures during the revision series. So if you see copy paste they have given, which is there uh, for students which I had sent, it's not on YouTube. So if you see copy paste, the first question is copy paste. So if you had just studied or gone through this uh, series, would have been easier for you. Exact question, guys. CIT International Taxation versus Air India Limited, Supreme Court judgment. Copy paste. Copy paste. They had asked this. No change only. See, first question is that only. I had taken an engine only is under an agreement with a foreign company, lesser. Yes. So the other two are, you know, similar case laws. I'll go through that properly so and really suggested answer so that you will know exactly which case law, what it is, what are the, what is, what should, what should you write and all those things. Then some theory questions, exchange of information in our international tax, we had done this. I told you also that uh, we should not, what do you say, ignore the theory because five to six marks will come. Globe rules also we had done, both have come there. Then uh, obviously question on tax audit had to come. So I released a, a two to three hour video on tax audit. Uh, if you have done that properly, you could easily solve this question. Pretty straightforward question. Some of the examples are there taken from the institute material itself. Since it's new, they have given from that only. Then there was a question on tax planning, tax management, tax evasion. So in this, if you gift your 50 lakh worth of, what do you say, FDR to your major son, would it be tax evasion or is it a form of tax planning. So if you have done the theory properly, based on that, you can write the answer. 
Similarly, in second one also, just to ensure that the commission will not cross 50 lakhs, he did a diversion of income, so to speak. It is not by overriding title. You, instead of you paying me, I just told you pay it to my wife. So that would amount to diversion of income. So that would come under, not under tax planning as such. It would more so be tax evasion. Then the last question was on authority of advanced rulings. So that's about it, guys. Uh, if you ask me, as I told you, it's an average paper. Not too easy, not too difficult. But if you had studied uh, properly, then of course you can score well in this. So do your IDT paper really well. All the best. You have a couple of days off. And uh, people are asking me for IBS. What are you doing, sir? So guys, uh, I'm happy to inform you that on 15th May, Tarun sir, Chinmay sir and I will be doing a live session. We will be covering 10 case studies, very, very important case studies, which uh, has come in the MTP also. Maybe some will be picked and directly it will come. We have made an Excel sheet where we will write all those things and we'll be coming live. So it's going to be streaming live on my channel and on Tarun Ratcha's channel. So stay tuned for that. Please revise with us only. It will be very easy. So everyone can attend that. Okay. On that note, thank you so much, guys. Study well for IDT and all the best. See you on 15th of May. Take care.